Hello, friends. We are so happy to have you joining us today. I am Janice Mitchell, a pelvic health physical therapist in Central Texas, and I'm joined by Jared Green, a UK-based pelvic health physical therapist. So happy to have him here, or physiotherapist, rather. This topic today is specifically on how to be a great pelvic health PT during COVID-19. We understand that our whole, um, our whole method of treatment really has been radically changed because we very much like that one-on-one -on -one connection time, putting our hands on patients and helping them with one-on-one -on -one skills to improve. And so how do you do that with the social distancing guidelines and with businesses closing and having to be virtual and so forth. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on how I have handled it with my clinics in Texas. And then uh, Jared is going to share his experience from the UK. And I would also just kind of like to say, just because I've done this with my clinics, that doesn't mean that all Texas-based clinics are doing this or that all US-based clinics are doing this because I know that a lot, a lot have just completely closed their doors and not done any, not been able to see people live. Uh, I would also like to add a disclaimer that you need to be very mindful and comply with your local, state, and federal guidelines. So it's going to differ from state to state, from country to country. Um, and, you know, we were talking earlier in the week about the difference even that space makes. So I'm in Central Texas and we have a lot of space. We don't have, we don't have some of the struggles, I think, that um, people that are living very, very close to each other have. Not that COVID still can't spread the same way here, but if you have more space, it's easier to social distance and it's easier to implement some strategies so that you can still be able to have that connection time. So at our clinics, um, we have six ways that our pelvic health therapists can connect with patients. Uh, number one is via telehealth or video visits. So very much similar like to what we're doing here where we have Zoom sessions and the therapist is either at their, generally at their, their home, but sometimes they're at our clinic uh, doing the session from a room, but the patient is at their house, okay? So that's option one. Option two is an in-home visit, but doing it outside. So going to the patient's home, but being outside the clinic. So outside in the front yard or outside on the porch. And of course, you have to talk with your patients in advance. Does this work for you? Is this an option? You know, what is your setup like? Uh, do you feel comfortable doing this? And, and, and with the outside front of the yard visit, it's, you're not going to do everything that you would do in an internal room, you know, you, you're, so you're going to be fully clothed, but there's still a lot of things that you can do uh, outside. And then the third type of visit is an in-home, inside visit. I did a little video on this on Instagram. So if you want to check it out, it's about five and a half minutes. And I just kind of record myself doing a sample visit with these different six types. But basically, you can go inside a patient's house without touching a surface. So I brought my own stool. My patient, which was my lovely mother, opened the front door for me. So I didn't have to touch that surface. We were using PPE. Um, and so I sat on my surface. And we were following the social distancing guidelines. So we had, you know, the space between us and so forth. But there is a way, you know, if you need to put your hands on someone, I think that you still can. You've got to follow, you know, follow infection control guidelines with masks and gloves and all of that. But so third type is in-home visits. The fourth type is a common area visit. Okay. So talk to the patient. Hey, do you want to meet at a park? Do you want to go to a parking? Is there a church parking lot or something? You know, you know, let be creative. Where does the patient feel comfortable? You know, making sure that it's a safe place. But I show an example of meeting at a park and it was a lovely day, beautiful weather. She brought her chair. I brought my chair and we were able to interact and engage. And I think that if there's any possibility that you are able to have that face to face and engagement time, a good mix is, is ideal because yes, telehealth is wonderful and I'm so happy that we have that opportunity. But, you know, having that face-to-face -face interaction um, is also powerful and needed. Uh, okay, so that was the fourth type. 
The fifth type is curbside. So again, this is dependent on your space, but we have really nice big parking lots. So we have patients that come drive up to our clinic and we, the therapists, go out to their car. So I, again, in that video, I show, I bring my stool, my patient has a chair, and we do a visit outside in the parking lot, outside the car. And some people don't want to go into a building. They don't want to go into a building. They don't want to touch a surface. And that is fine. How can we, how do you feel most comfortable? And so our staff has, has had to evolve rapidly to accommodate the different guidelines to make sure that our staff is safe, that our patients are safe, but that we're still meeting the needs of our patients. So curbside, and we even have had some people do curbside visits that didn't want to get out of their car. Well, that's okay. We, you can stay inside your car. We can be outside the car and we can still do a lot. And then, um, the last type is in clinic inside the building. So we've had to radically modify how we do things. We now, we don't have lobbies anymore. So we have what we call lobbyless waiting. So we have people come to their appointments and they virtually check in from their cars. And when the therapist is ready, then they come into the clinic. And we are trying to have as minimal surface contact as possible. So, um, and our, and our, our kind of motto is every surface every time so if somebody touches the door handle we're wiping that down um and so i'll uh you know in the video i kind of go over a demo of what an in-person visit could look like but again that's just a sample you've got to apply what works for you in your environment and your patients and your staff but my point here is you've got to be creative and also follow guidelines. So if your guidelines are very restrictive and they don't allow you to do anything in person, well then you're, I'm going to, I'm, now I'm going to lob it back to Gerard. Uh, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about your experience. And I think it's also valuable to kind of share the landscape of what life looks like in the UK right now. Like how many times yeah. are you able to go out of the car or out of the house? Are you able to drive your car out and about? Like what does life look like and what does it look like for you and your patients? I think that's really, that's, that's of real interest to me, what you've just said, because uh, I think because this is affecting everywhere, we're all at different stages. So I think currently you can't say, I wouldn't say I'd say 99% plus of UK physio clinics have closed for face to face contact and are, have been closed for probably now a month. So that's both independent clinics like my own have closed and all hospital based outpatient clinics have closed. And then some, like myself, have, have transitioned to doing online, online consultations via Zoom. Uh, but nearly all clinics have closed. Um, and that was really to meet the UK social distancing guidelines. So currently, so I live in Birmingham. So Birmingham is a city probably of about a million people. But then on the outskirts of Birmingham, we have some other cities. So it's, 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 a, it's quite a big area. It's quite a densely populated area. Uh, and outside of London, we are we probably have the second highest incidence of of uh, COVID patients and, and COVID deaths because we are a very densely populated we're a city city area. Uh, so day to day here, so uh, the only people allowed to physically go out to work are those key workers. So that's people who work in hospitals, uh, shops, transportation. Um, other people can go to work if they can maintain social distancing, but generally most people are home working. All non-essential businesses have closed. So when, when I go up to my high street, uh, all the coffee shops are closed. All the, because we're in the UK, we've got lots of pubs. All the pubs are closed. All the uh, dry cleaning is closed all the clothes shops, shoe shops, chicken shops. The, the, so the only thing that's really open is the grocery stores. And also uh, the, it, it's, and it's likely that 
we will have at least another three weeks of that, but it's likely we will have much longer because uh, in terms of our death rate is, is, is frighteningly high. Um, so I think what's, uh, what's happened within the physiotherapy world here is some clinics, not all clinics, some clinics have moved to doing uh, online physiotherapy. And that's, I think that was a, that, that was a real uh, transition for us to make. I think we were in an easier position because, because we specialize in pelvic health. We always used to see patients who, who would travel good distances to see us. So, you know, some of the male pelvic patients would maybe travel three, four hours to see us. Some of the female patients would travel a long distance. Uh, so it's, and then we'd have the occasional person from abroad, but we never really promoted that too much for many reasons. But so with, with some of those patients, we would follow them up online. So we were familiar with doing that. Uh, but with our local patients, they were definitely seen in the clinic. So we, we've now kind of offered the online appointments to everybody. And that's worked. That's worked well. I, I enjoy doing them. A couple of my colleagues do them. Uh, and but. It's, I think it's been, I think the, the COVID-19 has created a lot of anxiety and uncertainty for a lot of phys physical therapists um, in different parts of the States and here in the UK and everywhere really, because it's, it's just a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, because even with the things that we've implemented, we've, our, you know, our patient load is like way 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 yeah. so we have to cut hours i mean and so our therapists are really having to be creative and we have people um working on other projects and youtube videos and online courses and you know just or 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 doing a lot of housekeeping stuff so you're so busy a lot of times with your day-to-day -day activities that you may not take time out to connect with people so we actually have our therapists going back and looking at okay we would like you to call make a call to everyone that you've seen within the last six months and just check on them. That doesn't mean we're trying to get them to come into the clinic, but let's build that relationship and that connection. Yeah. So let's use that downtime that you have to, to generate um, some pro productive activities. And how powerful is that for a patient to get a call from their actual provider, not just the front office reminding them, yeah. but the provider saying, hey, we just want to check on you. And I think it's real. It's 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 a real benefit for me to hear what you've said because I do think that when things reopen in the UK, physiotherapists, physiotherapy clinics will probably be in the first wave of businesses that reopen, like opticians, dentists. Uh, so I think we will reopen first. But I think how we work will be probably like what you've described in terms of you know no waiting area minimal people in the building um you exactly. know exactly so i think it's so i think people are at at, at very different stages so i think it's interesting to see what are hap what's happening in 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 other countries i think in terms of telehealth it i think now is a time when our patients do really need us because you know covid-19 it hasn't suddenly cured people of prolapse, pelvic pain, urinary incontinence, low back pain, pregnancy related problems. If anything, it's making them much worse because people are stuck at home, can't exercise, sitting most of the day, doing lots of screen time and also driving anxiety, especially around pregnancy postnatal. And it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, so I think it's, it's important that physios realize that you know, their communities still need them. And it's, it's not easy to, physiotherapy is, is, is a very uh, people-centered profession. Uh, it's a very hands-on profession, but you know, a lot of what we do, especially in pelvic health is, we do a lot of uh, kind of questioning and very kind of intimate, sensitive questioning, but we can still do that. You know, I, I've done a lot of that today, yesterday, the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I think what there, there has probably been some sort of panic within the physiotherapy community, not, not everyone, but oh, yeah. you know, there has been panic, but I think what I'm a big believer in that, you know, you don't have to change everything in the first week. Sometimes you need to step back, realize 
this is something we're not used to doing, you know, and it, you can change things over a few weeks. Absolutely. It has been a progression. And even that first, so just to give a little personal insight, I went on a humanitarian trip to Cuba the first week and a half of March. And so I came back and yeah, there was Corona before I went, but it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Like we weren't worried about it. <laughs> when I came back, it was, and we didn't have internet in Cuba. So I just, I didn't have Instagram, CNN, nothing. I talked to my husband a few times, but it was like $3 a minute. So it was very, very limited timing. And we we came back into the U S and it was like the sky had fallen. Complete chaos was all about us. And so I think you mentioned either in this one or in another segment that we did today, you know, that first week, <laughs> I had a difficult time processing everything and I try to be a stable um, a sta in a stable mood I have you know two teenagers and I have a college-age son and my 81 year old mom is living with us and I want to be I want to be a, a stable force in the household and that first week was really really hard for me to even process okay what and i you know with because we have we also have a home health agency and we have five outpatient therapy clinics and so amongst that i'm employing about 82 people and so that's also a weight on my shoulders okay if i close the clinics how am i going to be able to support them and how are they going to be able to support their family so looking at all the guidelines we spent so much time on the cdc and who and uh, who and the department of homeland security has some really good guidelines so i think it's definitely an individualized approach but we're gonna we have to be creative and we have to evolve and you you're going to need to reevaluate how you're doing things but i believe at least in our in our clinics this is actually making us stronger because there's some things that i wanted to implement that i just hadn't done it like telehealth i had wanted to have telehealth that had been on my radar for a while but i just hadn't taken the plunge um, now we're cashless clinics. I had wanted to not accept cash and checks. That's a hassle to go deal with the money. You know, I just wanted everything to be electronic. So now that is the case. Um, and moving even more towards the electronic virtual platform where you can remotely check in, you can remotely register and that kind of thing. Today, we're going to be sending out a, an email to our patients advertising the curbside visits. And we have a little, a little uh, survey that they're going to get to take that tells them a little bit about the different types of visits. And they get, to, they get to tell us what type of visit they might want or do they want to call to talk more about it. So I think communication is also key. You've, even if your doors are closed right now and you're just doing telehealth, you've got to communicate regularly with your customers. Let them know that, yes, you're... Physical doors may be closed, but you're still available for telehealth and keep them posted on when you're projecting to open, if you even have that date. If you don't, that's okay. But just, I think the communication and being transparent um, and letting them know that you're still there and you are coming back. When and where and how is still to be determined, but you are coming back. Yeah, I agree. And I, I do think it offers a lot of opportunity and i don't say that lightly because you know the first week i had was not not a particularly good week uh but i do think and i think i think particularly for pelvic health physiotherapy it's it's it offers a lot of opportunity because you know i th i think i have you know i've met physios from many countries particularly a lot in the states and you know a lot of their patients are driving big distances but for a lot of those review appointments, we could probably start doing some of those online. And now we will be happy to do that. Exactly, exactly. I think it's going to be a win for our patients. So, because think about how many visits that you've seen that could have been handled online, that you didn't actually have to put your hands on somebody. So much of our information is education and so forth. So bottom line, be creative, evolve, follow the guidelines, but think outside the box too. Okay, so yes, this is the guideline, but how can I meet this guideline, but still be able to meet the needs of my patients? And I think lastly, I think what I've noticed, especially in the first few weeks, is that it, it, it is it's important to uh, kind of talk things through with, you know, colleagues who are in a similar situation to you. But I think it's really important to talk things through and get support 
from people who have a calmness about them, who are going through a diff who are going through a difficult time, but that you don't start to absorb a lot of their stress. Uh, so it, 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 you know, it's it's good to lean on other people. It's good to have a, 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 a you know, we all have people we can we we lean on for support, and they can lean on us. But it it is a difficult time, and I think you want to be uh, around quite level-headed people who may be having a difficult time because that kind of feeling of panic is uh, what's the word? It it's kind of uh, contagious. Yeah. And then you just get stuck in this vicious cycle and then the people around you are in this vortex and then you're all swirling, which is admittedly where I was the first week. But thankfully, we've come out and, and even, you know, just having that peaceful, positive attitude, regardless of what is happening, even, even if. So, uh, no, so we can't, it's, it's kind of beyond, we cannot control it. So if you can't control something, you need to adapt to it. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where we are in a month and six months and a year. So we'll have to do this again and see how our practices have evolved. But I hope that that gave you, gave you some tips about how we're handling things in different areas of the world and how as guidelines are changed that you may be able to evolve your practice um, and uh, still be able to connect with your patients and fulfill our mission of, of serving and helping. And healing. Brilliant. And thank thank you very much, Janice. Thanks once again. And thank you everyone for uh yeah. for taking the time to listen. We appreciate that too. Absolutely. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.